So this one is a little bit different because now we have fractions on the inside of the parentheses and on the outside of the parentheses. So what I would recommend doing here, if you have both, or if you just have fractions on the inside, is to get rid of the parentheses first. All right, so this goes back to our general advice from the intro video, where if you see parentheses, you generally want to get rid of those first. This problem up here was kind of the exception. If you have fractions on the outside, then that's probably what you want to get rid of first. Or at least in my point of view, that's what I would get rid of first. Now you could also in this problem, I didn't mention it, but you could just distribute this first. That's completely valid. And actually in all honesty, had you done that, you would get rid of the fractions in that step. So you can do that. It doesn't always work to get rid of the fractions, but you can distribute it first if you would prefer that. So you can always follow that general advice. It's just sometimes I think it's better to get rid of fractions first. Um, in this case though, we're gonna follow the advice because they're on the outside and the inside. And so I'm going to distribute first here. Okay, and I'm not going to rewrite it. So we'll just rewrite it once we distribute. So we have 1 fourth K equals 3 times minus 1 fourth K. So effectively, the numerator is getting multiplied by 3. So you get minus 3 fourths K. And then 3 times 3 would be positive 9. Now, we don't have any parentheses, but we do have variables on both sides. And you might recall from the final video with equations on variables on both sides that if you have fractions you can get rid of them in one step usually now if you have two different denominators then it's a little bit harder and we might look at those later but when there's just one fraction type like division by four here you can get rid of that in one step in fact since we have division by four we will do the opposite we will multiply to cancel that out. But remember, you gotta multiply everything by four. And so four divided by four, that's just one. So you get one K or just K. Over here, four divided by four, those cancel and you just get minus three K. And then nine times four is 36. And now once we've gotten rid of the fractions, it's a little bit simpler. We could move the variables all to one side. And I will do that since we have a negative amount over here and a positive amount over here, I'm gonna move them to the left side. And to cancel out minus 3K, I will add 3K on each side. These go away since minus three plus three is zero. And K plus 3K would be 4K. And this equals 36. And now to cancel out the four, we'll divide both sides by four since we had multiplication here and division is the opposite. So four divided by four is one. So you get K is 36 divided by four, which is just nine. And from here we check it, though this one is hard to check. But when you do it, you get nine fourths right here, because nine times a fourth is nine fourths, is three times, here we'd have minus nine over four plus three. And you can see this is just a little bit hard to check. You got to give this a denominator of 12 or of four. So that would make it 12. I'm sorry. Yeah, 12 over four. So let me just rewrite it like that. So three is the same as 12 over four. We do that so that we can actually add these fractions. So nine fourths would be three times minus nine plus 12 would be three. And then the denominator stays the same. And it's true that 9 fourths does equal 3 times 3 fourths because you would just multiply the numerators and get 9 up top and 4 in the bottom. So we can feel confident that this is, in fact, the right answer. Now let's do one final problem just to kind of wrap this up. All right, this one has decimals, but it effectively will be solved the same way. So we see parentheses, so that's what we want to get rid of first. So let me rewrite it, 3 plus 0 0.5. And we have 4a plus 8 in parentheses equals 9 minus 2a. We're going to distribute, distribute the 0.5 to both of these terms. And 0.5 is the same thing as 1 half. So you're effectively taking half of 4a and half of 8. But if you want to actually multiply decimals, that's fine too. 4 times 0.5, you ignore the decimal first when you multiply. You get 20. 5 times 4 is 20. 
And then however many decimal places you had in each of your factors, you count those up. You had zero here and you had one here. So you'll move one place over in your answer and you'll get two. But like I said, 0 0.5 is the same as a half and a half of four is two. So you get three plus two a and then 0 0.5 times eight, you do eight times five, which is 40 and then move the decimal once. So you get four. This is equal to nine minus two a. And we're going to combine like terms. So three and four make seven. So you get two a plus seven is nine minus two a. And from here, we just want to get all the variables on one side. We're going to move them to the side with more, the side with 2a. So we will add to cancel out this subtraction. And so 2a and 2a make 4a plus 7 is 9. And then this is just 0. Minus 2 plus 2 is 0. And now we've got a two-step equation. Let me just rewrite it. 4a plus 7 is 9. We want to isolate the a term. So we got to get rid of the plus 7. Remember, in two-step equations, you're just getting rid of the simple stuff first, like addition and subtraction. So to cancel out addition, we will subtract 7 on each side. And we get 4a is 9 minus 7 is 2. And dividing by 4 to cancel out that multiplication, you get a is 2 fourths, which is the same as a half. So that is our final answer. We would check our work right now. Let's do that. We're going to plug in a is 1 half. Let me just scroll over. So we're going to check. And we want to find out, does A equal 1 half? So you get 3 plus 0 0.5, parentheses 4 times a half, plus 8. And then this is supposed to be equal to 9 minus 2 times a half. And so let's simplify. So we'll start in the parentheses. And 4 times a half is just 2, so you get 2 plus 8, which is 10. So you get 3 plus 0 0.5 times 10. So we effectively want half of 10, which is 5, and 3 plus 5 is 8. So this all simplifies to 8 on the left side. And on the right side, you have 9 minus 2 times a half. 2 times a half is just 1. Half of 2 is 1. So you get 9 minus 1 on the right and nine minus one does equal eight. So we can feel very confident this is in fact the right answer.